There are two things that cause your clutch to wear. One is heat and two is shock. There's also the release bearing, but more on that one later. One way you can help keep your clutch cool is by moving away with less than 2000 RPM of revs. For example, here, I'm gonna move away with under 2000 RPM of revs. That way my clutch stays cool and therefore it doesn't wear as much. But this time I'll just stop after this bus stop and I'm gonna move away with a bit more. First gear, let's give that much free. Let's move away now, I can move away a lot more quickly but that generates a lot more heat and causes a lot more wear. There are two things that can cause your clutch to overheat. One is moving away with too many revs, as I've just demonstrated, and the other is holding the clutch on the bite point without letting the car move. A good example is when the handbrake is on during the hill start. Like now, if you wanna use the handbrake method of the hill start, you put it in gear, you get the gas, you get the bite point, and you keep it there whilst you wait for an opportunity to move away. The clutch is getting hotter and hotter, and I wanna stop doing that right now because that's gonna be overheating my clutch. What you should do is get the gas ready if you think you might be able to go soon because the clutch isn't overheating if the gas is on but the clutch is down, and you wait for an opportunity to present itself. When you see the opportunity coming, get the bite point ready as the opportunity reaches you. Try and time it well so you think that bus is going past now. As the bus goes past, bite point, check your blind spot and take the handbrake off and then get going. That way you're not holding the clutch on the bite point longer than you need to. Of course on that occasion there wasn't actually a bus coming but let's pretend there was for the purposes of that demonstration. Talking about handbrake starts, don't do them unless you need to. For example, here I'm not on a hill, so I can put my foot on the clutch, get first gear and take the handbrake off and the car doesn't roll, so I don't need to use it. However, if you're afraid that the car may still roll because the road's uneven or there's a slight hill, maybe you're not sure if it is a hill or not, well, you can just put your foot over the brake, take the handbrake off. If the car starts to roll, press the brake straight away, then you know you need a handbrake start. But at the moment, off the brake, doesn't roll, I don't need one, so I can just add some gas, wait until nobody's coming and there is some people coming now so i'll fast forward this bit now there's no one coming check my blind spot no one to signal to lift the clutch to the bite point and the car starts moving straight away so little heat is generated if you want to know how to do a hill start without using the handbrake i'll leave a link to a video up there on different ways you can start on a hill and how you can deal with slow moving traffic on hills in a manual car Another thing that can overheat the clutch is using the clutch to keep the car still on a hill. For example, I'm on a hill here. If I take my handbrake off, the car is gonna roll backwards down the hill. So what some people do to stop the car rolling back is they use the gas and the clutch to hold the car steady. And this is just as bad as having the handbrake on and being at the bite point. The clutch is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. That's not good. It's okay if you're in traffic to lift the clutch of the bike point, move a little bit, clutch back down, slow down, lift it up, move a bit, clutch back down and slow down like this, because you're only actually using the clutch bike point for a little bit at a time, so it doesn't cause too much wear. However, if you're in an extended queue, say really bad traffic up a long hill, then that could cause wear because you are using the clutch overall a lot. Usually you don't have to do it for too long, but if you're doing it for several minutes at a time, it's best to give it a break. What you can do is stop the car, pull the handbrake up, put it in neutral, come off the clutch and let the clutch cool down when the traffic stops. And when the car in front moves forward a foot, don't move. When the car in front moves forward a metre, don't move. Wait until the car has gone a couple of car lengths forward then clutch down first gear, get the car moving, actually do a movement, then stop again. That way you're reducing how many times you're stopping and starting. Allowing a couple of car lengths between you and the car in front before you get going isn't unreasonable. Many people ask me if this causes clutch wear. Let's say you're trying to park and you're using the gas pedal and you're lifting the clutch to the bike point to move a bit and then clutch down to let it roll. Clutch up to push the car, then clutch down to let it roll. So you're constantly using the clutch because if I was to come off the clutch, the car would shoot up to four or five miles an hour minimum. And you need to do this when you're parking. 
It doesn't really cause much wear though because you're only using the clutch a little bit for short periods of time and you're allowing the wheels to move so you're not putting the clutch under much strain. What does wear the clutch though, and I do see people do this, is when they keep their foot on the brake, lift the clutch to the bike point, make the car strain by controlling the speed now with the brakes. So they're constantly on the bike point telling the car to go, but then they're using the brake to keep the car slow. So the clutch is constantly fighting the brake. It's like a tug of war. That's not good for clutch wear. To sum up, to keep your clutch cool, don't do fast starts with lots of revs. Fast starts really do wear your clutch quickly and don't be on the clutch bite point without allowing the car to move. Here are some examples of what causes shock. One is to move away by slowly coming off the clutch, but not giving the clutch enough time to finish doing its job. So you set off with a uh, like that. I don't know if you saw my head move forwards and backwards there as the car mildly kangarooed up the road. If you're new to driving a manual, I'm sure you've probably done that yourself. Another way to cause shock is to give too many revs when you change gear. When I change from first to second, I'll let the revs go too high and come off the clutch slowly and see what happens. There was an almighty jolt through the car. The same thing can happen when you go down gears. If you come off the clutch slowly, it's likely to be jerky. I'm gonna go down to second gear now, come off the clutch slowly, and yeah, there was a big kick through the car. I don't know if you could see it on camera, but I could certainly feel it. To prevent shock and have a smoother ride, instead of coming off the clutch slowly, which is guesswork, how slowly you need to come off a clutch for it to be smooth and prevent shock is different in every different gear and at every different speed in every different car. Instead, hold the clutch on the bike point until the clutch has finished its job. You know it's finished its job when it makes a different sound. You may not know what that sound is yet, but you have to experiment to find out. The way I teach my customers is when they get to the bike point, I'll say, hold the clutch, hold the clutch, hold the clutch. Hear that sound, it's finished, come off. That helps them get in tune with the car. Many people think this causes excessive clutch wear, but it's not true because the clutch is not under strain. It's not fighting your brakes and it's not fighting loads of revs. It's not very hard for the clutch to rev match in those situations, but more importantly, it prevents shock, which can be far more harmful. So now I'm gonna hold the clutch at the bite point when I move away until it's finished its job. It's working, it's working, the revs are steady, the revs are steady, the revs are building up now. It's changed its sound, the clutch is finished. Easy peasy, smooth every time in every car. In many cars, changing up gears smoothly is very easy. Simply clutch down off gas, up a gear, bring the clutch up slowly, and then you can add gas again. And it doesn't slow down too much and it's relatively smooth. But in some cars, it can be a bit harder. What you need to do is give a little bit of gas and hold the clutch on the bite point for a moment after you change gear to make sure it's smooth like this. So clutch down off gas, change the gear, little bit of gas, hold the clutch near the bite point for a second, and then come off the clutch. In any car, that's going to be smooth. Changing gear is more likely gonna be difficult in the lower gears. So if you're going from first to second, that's when you're more likely gonna to need to use a little bit of gas and hold the clutch on the bite point for a moment to make it smooth. In most cars, once you get to third or fourth, it's very easy to be smooth. Going down a gear is much harder though. You have to hold the clutch on the bite point until it has finished rev matching. This is how you can do that. I'm currently in fourth gear. I'm gonna go down to second gear and watch these revs. So clutch down, the revs go to idle, into second, I'll lift the clutch to the bite point. When I'm at the bite point, the revs will start rising like they are now. When they finish rising, like there, the clutch has finished its job, I can come off the clutch. Of course, you don't wanna watch those revs when you're driving, you wanna watch out the front window. So you need to get used to listening to what it sounds like. In my opinion, shock is worse than heat. If you overheat your clutch, it won't last as long. You'll have to replace it sooner and possibly replace the flywheel as well if you've damaged that. But if you put shock through the system, not only can you damage your clutch because it has a spring-loaded damper mechanism in the middle of it, but you can also damage other more expensive components of your car, such as your gearbox. The next component in your clutch you can damage, or should I say wear out more quickly, is your release bearings. 
Whenever you press the clutch pedal down, your release bearing is active and it's not designed to be active permanently. So don't rest your foot partially on the clutch because then you're putting the release bearing under load and try to avoid holding the clutch down and being in gear for long periods of time when you're in traffic. Give your clutch release bearing a rest by putting it in neutral and coming off the clutch whenever you can. So for example here, I'm in traffic. Instead of holding the clutch down and staying in gear, I'll just put it in neutral and come off the clutch. And that way the stop start system can work as well if you want that to work. Now I need to get going, clutch down first gear, bit of gas and bite point to get going. Need to stop again. If I'm waiting for very long, neutral, clutch up. Some people recommend that when you're waiting in traffic, instead of holding your foot on the foot brake, you should pull the handbrake up and come off the foot brake. You don't have to do this. This is your preference, it's up to you. The reasoning behind this is that if your handbrake's on, if someone hits you from behind, you're less likely to go forward or you'll go forward less distance and your brake lights aren't on so you're not dazzling people behind. However, I don't know about you, I've never been dazzled by brake lights. There was one occasion, but that Audi definitely did not have standard brake lights. They were very bright. Also, my foot brake is far stronger than the handbrake. If someone hits me from behind with the foot brake on, I'm not gonna go as far forward than if I had the handbrake on. Their argument would be if someone hits you from behind, you're gonna jump, panic, and slip off the foot brake. Personally, I think I'd brake harder if that happened. Maybe if they hit me hard enough, I might accidentally do it. I'm not sure. This car has post-collision braking anyway, so if someone hits me from behind, it applies the brakes automatically. So in this car, it doesn't actually make any difference. I'll leave a link to a video up there on how the clutch works. I have a pressure plate, a friction plate, which is the bit that most people talk about, a flywheel and a release bearing. Check it out if you're interested. It's been a bit dark today because it's the 7th of December and Storm Barrow is here, although it's dark quite often at this time of the year and it's four o'clock now, so it's dark anyway. If you think the video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Check out Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're looking for insurance and you're learning to drive, Collingwood allow you to insure yourself on somebody else's car so you don't affect their policy. At the moment, via the link, that's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you're insuring your own car, check out confused.com. You fill out one quote form, get loads of quotes back to see who's cheapest, and you can change the car on that quote as many times as you like to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.